Hello everybody! I am so excited to show you this paint palette technique today. First grab your surface and then either a template, an outline, or if you feel comfortable you can sketch your project onto your surface like I did here. I just took a sharpie and sketched out some pumpkins on this metal tray slab, uh, cabinet door, whatever it was. I then gathered my basic palette tools and the paint colors that I wanted to use. Then I used my little paint palette uh, to make sure the paint was smooth and added it to the back of the palette tool. Now here's the trick with this, and one thing I love about this technique is there is no exact science to it. It's just a visual and touch type of technique. So I add the paint to the back of the palette tool and I push in different directions to get the width or the consistency of the paint that I want onto the surface. Here I've decided just to do the outline first because I want to be able to see where my pumpkins are on the surface and then I can add all of the different depths and tones as we go further. But like I said, there is no uh, right or wrong way to use this technique, which is what I love. So I'm just adding uh, different amounts of paint onto the back of the palette knife and then uh, putting it onto the surface and pushing down in certain areas and adding in others, as you can see where there's some uh, heavier paint in certain areas and lighter paint in others. And I just continue to do this on through the uh, all the different pumpkins that I have added to my surface. Now that I have the basic pumpkin framed out, I'm going to go ahead and add the stems and I'm using a different color and a smaller palette knife to achieve this because I don't want it to be too wide. I want to be able to control how big these stems are. So as you can see, just very easy. Each one is slightly different and that's okay. That is what I'm going for. Then I choose another color. Now in between, I have applied heat to my um, surface so that I make sure that the paint is dry in between layers. If you have time, you can let it sit overnight or you can apply a heat gun, blow dryer, whatever to ensure that that paint is dry underneath. And this is where I'm gonna go in with another color and I'm gonna start to add the depth and the tones to these pumpkins and I love using non-traditional colors like the teal and later on you'll see I'll use purple and a couple of other colors that make it a lot of fun. But again, here there is no specific way to do it. You just push the palette knife in pressure in different areas and add as much paint or as little paint as you want on the back depending on what technique or what look you are going for.
as you can see, the bottom of this right pumpkin, I got a little heavy handed with that teal color. And so I went back and just added a little bit of another color to add the dimension to it. That's the thing I love about this technique as again, there's no right or wrong way. You can fix it as you go and just add layers and layers of paint and it looks like it is supposed to be there. So here's where we're going to have a little bit of fun. I'm going to take different colors and start to layer these pumpkins. As you can see, I already added a light pink layer, again, a non-traditional color, and orange, more traditional, but it's going to add depth and dimension to these pumpkins. Add as much or as little as you want, start to combine the colors together. Really, it's up to you on how you want it to look and the end result that you're looking for. But this is the fun part because these palette knives are gonna allow you to add dimension and thickness of paint in areas and just really have fun with this technique.
As we're going through, I have added a lot of different colors. Um, white for some highlighting and some deep purple. I just really love the depth and dimension of these pumpkins as we've gone through. Certainly you do not have to use all the colors that I have chosen. You could be very muted and have one or two colors or just a wonderful, beautiful palette with all the different colors like I've chosen here. Uh, again, it is totally up to you and what you wanna do. I'm now going through and just adding some extra depth and dimension underneath the pumpkins with an orange uh, shadowing effect in a way, uh, a ground slash shadowing effect just to help uh, give them some stability underneath. So I thought adding some raffia and ribbon to the top of this project would finish it off. I found some raffia and tied some jute rope in the middle of it to make sure that it all stayed together. Then I found some cute fall ribbon that would match and I layered it doing the messy ribbon technique or what is called the refab technique and I cut them to length and then just crisscrossed the ribbons across each other. and squinched them in the middle and then tied some rope around it and put them all together with the raffia. Once I got it all put together, I just got a little bit more jute rope and used that hole at the top of the metal cabinet door to tie it off and add that bow to the top. I just think it added just a little bit extra to the design and completed it. As you can see, we are now finished and we have this awesome fall decorative plate that I'm gonna add to my front porch for my fall decorations. Hope you enjoyed it.